DC Multiverse! Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brad the DC Universe Geek, as you probably already know. Thank you so much for joining me today as we take a brief look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse, Dr. Fate, Atom Smasher, and Hawkman, based on their appearances in the Black Adam feature film. At the time of recording this video, it ain't out yet, but darn does this ever look like a great movie. Anywho, so we know already what the packaging is gonna look like. Black. White. Blue. Window. Oh look, you can see the figures. Nothing new going on there. And the same thing for the side. It's the name of each character and where they're from. With the back having actually three really cool pieces of artwork for each character. Out of the package, here's what all three look like, and they each come with some form of stand, two being a black figure base and one being a flight stand. And Adam Smasher comes with interchangeable hands, Hawkman comes with his smashy smashy mace, and Dr. Fate comes with, well, nothing. And all three of them, of course, come with a McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse trading card. There's a bio in the back of each one. You can feel free to pause to read each of those if you'd like to. Other than that, we're going to move on to each figure individually, starting with Dr. Fate. Now, I love the fact that this Dr. Fate comes with gold boots and gold gloves. And while I do like the design of his waist and shoulder dressing... I believe that they're as movie accurate as it gets with a high production McFarlane Toys action figure. Let's just put Dr. Fate next to... Yeah, that's that's pretty close. I will say that if you look at the chest where the onk is, uh, mine's kind of messed up. That's because it came glued wrong and I had to fix it. And mine, well, his left foot broke right off. <laughs> the second that I moved it, it just went doink. So I had to fix it. I have contacted CMD store. I'm likely going to have to order a second one, which you should never have to do just so that you can get a figure that doesn't look like a bag of... In comparison to the other Dr. Fate, based on his Injustice appearance, yeah, I think this one really does it for me more than the other one. Except for that. I'm not a massive fan of this Dr. Fate's helmet. I realize this has nothing to do with Todd and everything to do with the movie. I just... Come on, man. There's no eye holes in this thing. And it's not even on both sides. It's it's different. I just... I don't know. I find myself wondering, why do they have to deviate so much sometimes from the comic book source material? No worries, though, if you're not a big fan of the helmet that came on the figure. Here we see that you can just put the helmet from the previous Dr. Fate on here. And it actually looks way better. I think it improves the figure hugely. Big time. Massive. And finally, the back of Dr. Fate's cape. It's funny, it's gold on the inside, which looks, that looks great. On the back, they're like, now we're gonna make it dark. And again, this isn't Todd's fault. This is just the character design. When you look at this in the package, you'd actually think, oh, the whole cape is gold. Nope, some of it's blue. And it, it, again, I mean, I sh maybe I should have paid attention or maybe, I don't know, was the back of his cape showcased in the trailer? And just before we finish with Dr. Fate, what's his articulation like? Well, the torso. The torso. It is... Oh, it looks like a... Looks like, look at that. Looks like an angry man's face. There's two eyes and a mouth. Get off my lawn. Actually, it looks like an angry old lady. Anyway, the torso has plenty of articulation back, but really nothing forward. Uh, Todd's really going to have to get better at this whole forward motion in his, his figures, because... Uh, ab crunch is essential. Arms down here, rounded hinge in the pit, and they go up as far as they want to. I feel like this does get in the way, but yeah, it does. It pushes them down a little bit. They got the full bicep swivel there. You can see that. And there is the double jointed elbows. Ooh, that's good. That's very good. He's got the wrist articulation, which is supposed to be a hinge. And I mean, we know what these figures do in general, right? Head on a ball joint, really bobbly. The waist is tight, but it's gonna be 360. His groin spreads all the way open. That's actually a lot of fantastic movement. He actually does have that approximation of a thigh cut articulation that does pretty well. Double jointed knees. And finally, we have ankle articulation by way of a very strange looking rounded shaped hinge. I get it. He's trying to make it look like the boot and not like a rounded hinge. So I do understand. Not quite sure if he hits the mark with it. Then you've got the toe and yeah, that's really, that's really it. 
He's fairly articulated. For me, one of the big ones is, can we get him into a flight pose? And the answer is yes, quite sufficiently. And next we have Hawkman, a character that pretty much in every way doesn't look anything like anything we've seen before. I mean, if you were to look at this guy in a silhouette, you'd say, well, yes, I can see that this is definitely Hawkman. He's got wings, he's got wings for ears, he's got big spiky mace. But as soon as you turn the lights on, dude looks hella different. The color scheme actually really works well, and I think that they changed it up probably because they decided to go with a black actor for this guy and not a white guy this time. This Hawkman, to me, seems to be clearly a product of Warner Brothers' diversity agenda moving forward. At any rate, the suit does look good, the, the colors do complement each other, and the design and sculpt of this figure itself also look really good for what they're supposed to be. Hawkman's nth metal mace actually looks really interesting. There's a lot of intricate designs and sculpts in there. Is it just me or does it look like with this here middle piece of the mace it's going to extend in the movie somehow? It seems like it will. And then you've got the handle. <laughs> oh, pardon me, sorry. As mentioned, this figure does have a very non-conventional Hawkman look. I mean, for one, I don't recall Hawkman ever having gold wings. I do kind of wish that these wings would open up. You know what I mean? I mean, we have had wings that have opened up on a character before. I'm looking at you, Batman Who Laughs. So the fact that these don't open up is just a missed opportunity, in my opinion. You can see that this is a suit that Hawkman has worn into battle probably more than a few times. The armor has dings and dents, some nice texture to it. The paint job is pretty good. Hawkman's got the brown pants as opposed to green pants. He's always had green pants, but these are brown. And I suppose they, you know, they work. I, you know what? I bet your green would have worked, too. They just went with brownish maroon for for shits and giggles. I don't know. Then you got the knees and the boots, and they have some really cool detail to them. I love the, the paint job on this. This is probably out of all three figures I'm going to review today. He is probably, in my opinion, the most visually pleasing out of all of the figures. He's also got some form of shielding just on the one forearm there with what appears to be something for punching. There's like hawk claws on the, on the front there. Well, this side just has a basic arm wrap. It does kind of suck that they never actually painted any of, you know, the elbow the proper color in here, it should have, you know, ended here, and then this should have been all dark down there, and that just looks weird. Mm, no, 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 actually, upon closer inspection, it seems evident to me that I need to revise my theory. The problem is not right here, the insides of the elbows. No, the problem is actually the sides right here, the tops of the forearms, which have not been painted correctly. They've actually been left the darker brown color rather than been painted the appropriate flesh color of Carter Hall. Now the problem with this is there are many people who feel that Todd McFarlane's action figure offerings are nothing more than humanoid shaped action figure trash by not properly painting the figures where they're supposed to be painted and just cheapening it and leaving the figures in the molded color where they're clearly not supposed to be, well, they're not winning any new fans doing this, are they? Because it looks cheap. If you look up close, you can actually see there's a little tiny hawk emblem right there in the buckle. I do prefer an across the chest X sort of four strap look as opposed to three, but it's clear that this is just holding on his rubbery, soft, movable shoulder pauldron on both sides. And when you pull his wings off, it actually seems to me like maybe the wings are part of the actual suit itself. Like, I don't think they're part of his body. I think that these are part maybe of, of this. And as for the face, well, first of all, his winged Hawkman helmet, that uh, looks pretty good, I suppose, for a movie adaptation of, of what someone would be wearing. That doesn't look too terrible. Yes, he does, in fact, have a face underneath there. You can actually see some googly eyes and whatnot, but the top of his head up here is actually, there's no hair. <laughs> so you can see underneath there, he's got that going on. I think all in all he's a very good looking figure, but really, let's see how he compares to other Hawkmans. Like the DC Collectibles New 52, along with the Mattel version of the New 52 Hawkman, and then a classic Hawkman by DC Direct with custom swapped wings, 
and the DC Universe Classics Classic Hawkman to go right along there beside him. But really at this point, because he's a flying character, we also want to know exactly how articulated he is or is not. First of all, he's going to have articulation in the torso. The rubber bodysuit here, the question is how much will it or will it not hinder the posability? And I would say don't expect much in the torso because of the rubber bodysuit. The waist will have a huge amount of articulation because McFarlane figures typically at the waist do get very good articulation. You've got the arms here and they're on the rounded hinges right here and are they going to be about the same? Oh well that one clicks and that one doesn't. That's just up and down. Oh and that one clicks. Well that's strange. Anyway the pauldrons it might look like they're getting in the way but they're really actually they're actually really not. It, it doesn't go up any further. Full 360 bicep swivels, you know what they're going to do. Double crunchy elbows, so that's really good. And then of course the wrists, we know what they're going to have. Rounded hinge, and I feel like this is the kind of thing that we all pretty much know. The head. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. All right, look at that. That's pretty good. Combine that with the waist. Yep, that's definitely an acceptable amount of articulation for a flight pose. And then of course, down here, he's got that typical articulation. Now this one doesn't have a lot of motion like that. Oh, that's so tight, there's nothing there really. Out, back, all around, just not a lot of what you would consider to be a thigh swivel or whatever. Double jointed knees, they crunch up just enough for me. You've got a big rounded ball joint down there in the ankles with toe articulation and a pivot. Oh, look at that. He's got treads on the bottom of his boots. I didn't notice that. Now, let's move on to Adam Smasher, who is not, you know, a, a terribly designed character. I think that it's, you know, I think that it's okay. And I think that Todd, when you compare the figure side by side with what the suit actually looks like, yeah, I think he's done a pretty darn good job approximating what the character looks like. Not so much with the mid area though where the belt is, there certainly has been some omitted color detail that could have been painted in, but he does certainly have very cool looking boots. Those are very spaceman like. And the knee pads match as do the wrist gauntlets. They both have a very interesting sort of battle worn look to them. The color palette looks okay. The emblem on Adam Smasher's chest is sculpted on and then painted. And you know what? That could have been done a whole lot worse. Yeah, I think I'm pretty satisfied with that. The whole suit has an interesting texture over it, which makes it actually look like it's a fabric of some kind, so that's very cool. Not so keen on the design of Adam Smasher's mask with the lighter blue around the eyes and then the darker. I just doesn't quite sit right. I sort of wish that, that they'd gone with something else or made it all the same color even, or maybe made it a little darker on the eyes or, or something like that. Now as for comparison, I only have the Collect and Connect DC Universe Classics, and having them side by side, you can really see that though the suit is very different, it's also quite similar in some ways. But at this point, what we need to know is how articulated he is. So the torso for Adam Smasher is actually the best articulated out of the three that we've reviewed today. The waist is very tight, but you know it's gonna have 360. The head is probably the least articulated. It's on a ball joint like the rest of them, but doesn't seem to get quite as much motion. You do have the arms, and they've got that little socket down in there. They only go up as far as this, like the rest of them. You've got your 360 swivel on the bicep. You also got your double jointed elbows. The classic risks with the ri risks. The classic rounded hinge wrists that we're used to seeing with McFarland. Sometimes they're good and useful, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're ugly, sometimes they're not. You've also got down here, that's what you got, and it does some of, none of this. Oh wow, <laughs> I thought it would do something. Nope, absolutely no motion like that. We do have double jointed knees, and we've got the ankle articulation, and we know what it's gonna do. Sometimes I feel like I'm just like droning on about the articulation, but I feel like some people still want to know about it. Now, one thing that drives me a little bonkers about this figure, and I've mentioned this before, you've got these, you've got these clickies right here, right? These kinda click into place, and they've got the place where they sit 
Now that one sits there. That is the most natural point for standing. However, when you stand him up, you'll notice that his legs are actually forward. So if you want to stand him up straight, you maybe click them back a bit, right? Nope, because then they click to there. And so you've either got all of his weight going back or you've got all of his weight going forward. So to find some kind of a happy medium, you really have to bend him at the knees and jerry-rig it and uh, I suppose it looks all right, but you know, I can tell that, I mean, uh, no, I just wish that, I don't like these ankles, they suck. My advice to Todd would be at least make sure that the ratchet point is in the middle of these two somewhere, a place where you can balance the figure properly, because that's not good, and that's not good. So what do I think of all three of these figures? Well, honestly, my favorite of them would have to be by character, it's Dr. Fate, by the interestingness of the figure, it's gonna be Hawkman, and for just wanting to pick one up and fiddle with it, it's gonna be Atom Smasher. They're all different takes on characters that we know and love to differing degrees, with Hawkman being completely different than any version of Hawkman I've ever known. Adam Smasher seemingly trying to emanate the classic version in a movie-esque cinematic world. And Dr. Fate being a very, very good cinematic approximation of a character that I love, except for I really don't like that helmet. So am I happy I got him? Sure, definitely. However, I'm not gonna lie, seeing these movie versions really make me want a comic book version of Hawkman and Dr. Fate. Anyway, that's all for now. I'm gonna go. Have yourself a DC day, everybody, and take care.